Hey, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's so good to see you uh, today. Amen. It is our Tuesday night Bible study. And uh, if you are following along with us, won't you just please um, say good evening to us in the chat as you are studying along with us. We love to see who is online with us, um, both on Facebook as well as on YouTube. And even later, it will repost again on Instagram. So if you are following along with us in this Bible study, please uh, say hello and then like and share so that this can get around to as many people as possible. We praise God for this opportunity every Tuesday night to come to you and to um, give you uh, what the Bible says about how we should live our lives according to God's will. We thank God for each and every one of you. I'm Pastor Brandon M. Spriggs, and this is the Zion Hill Agape Baptist Church. We thank God so much for you. And so um, we have been uh, on track with this series on <clears throat> the mind of Christ. And tonight we are going to look at uh, a lesson on two halves of a whole two halves of a whole. Um, and so um, this is part one of it. We will start it off tonight and then we will continue it next week. So if it gets good tonight, it gets gooder next week. I know gooder ain't a word, um, but there it is. All right. So uh, please make sure that you like and share this, invite as many people as possible. Amen. And let's get started with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you and we bless you today because you have been so good to us to bring us your word. Father, we don't deserve it. And what we actually do deserve you withhold from us. So we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We realize that you give us so much favor. We simply do not deserve it. So, so Father, for all these things, we ask that you would help us to walk out uh, your will to live according to your way, uh, to have deeper faith in your word, to grow to know you more. And it's in Jesus name that we pray. Amen. All right. So good to see everybody. We got a few people online. Say hey to me. I can see y'all. Can you see me? <laughs> Say hey to me. All right. Again, we're doing the mind of Christ, two halves of a whole. Uh, two scriptures that I want to start us off with, um, but and it is a Bible study, so we'll be flipping around in your Bible. Um, as I usually do, I'm going to give you the scriptures from the Christian Standard Bible. The reason why I like the Christian Standard Bible is because it's very straightforward with um, with uh, how we uh, 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 how we talk today. Amen. How you doing, Sister Jones? Good to see you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good to see you. Um, uh, it, it's straightforward, the Christian Standard Bible, with how we um, talk today and how we understand things. Amen. And so we praise God for that. And again, The Mind of Christ is a book by T.W. Hunt. Um, you can get it from any one of your bookstores, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever uh, your books are sold. Amen. I don't get any money for promoting it, but it is an excellent book to study. Uh, the Mind of Christ by T.W. Hunt. And then um, there is also study guides and videos and all of that stuff that go right along with it. But you, it's not necessary that you buy it because um, we're studying it today. So um, you, all you have to do is continue to study along with us every Tuesday night, and you will get um, a lot out of this, I believe. So the first scripture that I want us to see today is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. All right. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 in the Christian Standard Bible. This is what it says. And be kind and passionate one uh, to one another, forgiving one another, just as God forgave you. Amen. Let's hear it again. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God also forgave you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise God for you, Minister Green. Amen. And we praise God for you being in this Bible study today. Amen. Amen. And so, um, that is what we are building on today, uh, realizing that God did so much and we ought to be humbled by it 
by God's humanity, uh, God came down in the form of Jesus Christ, humbled himself of no reputation. I'm jumping ahead of myself, but in Philippians chapter two, verses uh, seven through eight, it really shows us the self-emptying of Christ. And it's not self-emptying in that Christ uh, no longer was God, but more so that Christ uh, um, put off his uh, divinity for just a little while and would put it on again later, but just long enough to humble himself and to know what it was like to be in this human flesh. And therefore he would be qualified to die on the cross for our sins. Why? Because he was he was uh, uh, tempted in every fashion, just like a man, yet he did not sin. And he's now the perfect sacrifice. Um, and so it says in Philippians chapter two, verse eight, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. And we talked about that last week about um, being a ser having the servant mind means that you are being obedient even to the point of death. OK. And so as we're talking about it today, you see it scrolling down at the bottom of your screen. I want to talk about two halves of a whole. And there's one more scripture I want to give you. I'm going to share it on the screen here. Um, here it is on the side. And hopefully you can see this. Uh, if not, then let me know and I will do something to make you to be able to see it. Amen. God bless you, Sister Sharon. Good good to see you today. Amen. Um, so let's see. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of that last word that you can't see. So uh, let's see what we can do to make that clearer. There we go. All right. So you should be able to see it now. The B attitudes. Now this is found in Matthew chapter five. And as you can see, it starts at verse three, Matthew chapter five, verse three, and then down through verse 10. It said, blessed, and this is a Christian standard Bible, blessed are or blessed are the poor in spirit for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the humble, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted uh, because of righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. All right. And so this is what we are building on today, the Beatitudes. And so I will be putting that up on the screen every uh, now and again. But um, we must understand that um, if, if we are to take our base scripture of what we've been placing this entire study on Philippians chapter two, verses five through 11, we understand that uh, even though it was a part of an epistle, it is also a hymn and a hymn is a song of praise to God. And so this part describes God's humanity because it says to us in Philippians chapter two, verses seven and eight, and I just put it uh, on the screen here, uh, it shows us God's humanity or Jesus's humanity. It says that Jesus was made in the likeness of men and found in fashion as a man. And so, yes, Jesus was God, but Jesus was also fully human. He was both fully God and he was also fully man. And one reason Jesus came to earth was to show us how to live, that if he could walk this out with the help of the Lord and be tempted, but never sin, then we have a chance of being redeemed. And so one reason that Jesus came is so that uh, we he could show us how to live. He is our example. And Jesus gave us a view of God's original intention for man. What was God's original intention for man? That he would reign, that he would have all power, that he would have uh, um, uh, control and dominion, amen, over all things. And so he's, he displayed what perfect humanity was intended to be. Jesus described himself as the good shepherd in John chapter 10. Uh, he's a good shepherd. And we talked about that last week. He was a good shepherd or he is a good shepherd because 
He lays down at the door of the fence that he's built around his sheep to make sure that his sheep can't wander off. And then to also make sure that wolves can't get in. And so the same Jesus that is trying to keep us from getting out is the same Jesus that is also keeping the enemy from attacking us from within. He's a good shepherd and he leads us. That's what a shepherd does. And so he said in John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus did not come to take away your life. He came to give you not just merely an existence, but abundant life. All right. And so God's uh, program for human conduct is contained in the Sermon on the Mount. Here's the first thing that we see there. The first thing that we see are blessings for right living. Now, I want you to write that down if you get a chance. Amen. Blessings for right living. Amen. Uh, blessings for right living. Praise the Lord. Good to see you, Brother Rogers. Blessings for right living. Now, let's get into that. And so that is Jesus's new law, the law of perfected, not perfect, but perfected humanity, the law of the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean to be perfected? It means that I'm imperfect, but because of Jesus Christ's sacrifice and because of what he did on the cross for me, then I am perfected. Uh huh. That means that I'm going to mess up sometimes, but God has already made provision for me to get it right and to help me to get back up and walk this thing out. Now, there's some people who don't believe that Christians can ever mess up if you are truly saved. And I don't know how they stay saved because I'm learning more and more about the word of God each and every day. And every day that I live for the Lord, every day that I wake up, my eyes open and I pray to the Lord, I'm learning something new. And so my goal is to be perfected. What does that mean? I'm going to get better today than I was yesterday. And that's what uh, that's what the blessing of right living is all about. We want to get better and better and better and better and better each and every day. And so what has Christ given us to help us in that walk? He has given us the be attitudes. Now, I just shared them on the screen with you, and um, we'll talk about them again, but throughout the entire Sermon on the Mount, and please go back and read it in your personal devotion time if you do get a chance, Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7. Those two chapters are the Sermon on the Mount. Amen. And um, uh, this is Jesus's, as I said, new law. Um, because Jesus began his great sermon on kingdom living with these eight blessings for right living, they assume real importance. All right. They are very important. Why? Because this is the first thing that Jesus told us. This was Jesus's first sermon. And he talks about not money, not cars, not politics, not any of that stuff. The main thing that Jesus talks about, the first thing that Jesus talks about when he opens up his public ministry is right living. So that lets you know that this is first and foremost to God. This is of utmost important that we live right, not just in the eyes of people, because then that will have you looking real holy on social media, but full of holes in real life. Amen. And so we want to look, uh, we want to have right living in front of God, whether somebody is looking or not. Somebody ought to say amen, because that's what real integrity is all about. Who you are when nobody is, is looking. That's what right living is all about. Uh, living right, even when nobody pats you on the back or notices or likes or shares or comments on the right things that you're doing. You're doing it because Christ commanded it. And here's where we find it. And so we have eight B attitudes. I'm going to reshare them on the screen. Eight B attitudes. And here they are. Let me take this uh, banner down for a second so that you can see all of them. All right. And so it says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, blessed means happy. So happy are the poor in spirit. 
Happy are those those who mourn. Happy are the humble. Uh, happy are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Happy are the merciful. Happy are the pure in heart. Happy are the peacemakers. Happy are are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Those are the B attitudes. All right. And so um, these describe a whole person blessed by God, because you notice it starts off by saying blessed or happy uh, and living as God had intended. Again, that's why we bring up the point of uh, the blessings of right living. And so please notice a couple things with me. We're going to do this sort of dichotomy. So here's what I want you to do on a sheet of paper. On one side of the uh, sheet of paper, I want you to write first four. And on the other side, I want you to write second four. Now I'm gonna give you a moment to, uh, to do that, okay? But uh, I'm gonna give you some time to do that before I move on with this exercise. But get out a sheet of paper, all right? And on, on the first, on one side, just draw a line straight down the middle, a line straight down the middle. On one side, I want you to put first four. On the other side, I want you to put second four. And up at the top for a, a title, you can put um, uh, the Beatitude. OK, or the blessings of right living, uh, the Beatitudes, which, whichever you one you want to do. Again, line down the middle on the right side. I want you to put first four on the left side. I want you to put second four. And we're going to do this dichotomy. We're going to talk about the first four Beatitudes and the second four Beatitudes and what they reveal to us about the blessings of right living. All right. Two halves of a whole. That's the that's the lesson today. We're looking at those two halves of the whole teaching and the whole sermon on the Beatitudes. And so notice that the first four and the second four display a symmetry between two halves and all parts, all all halves are necessary. You can't get one half and not get the other half and think that you're living right. You got to get both halves of the whole. The whole represents a complete human being in God's design for humanity. That's exactly what it represents. And so let's get down to the basis of happiness. So on this side of your sheet of paper, remember, for those of you who just joined us, told you to get a sheet of paper and draw a line straight down the middle on the right side or left side, whichever side, uh, put first Ha, uh, first four on the second side, put uh, second four up at the top, across the top. I want you to put be attitudes, blessings of right living. All right. And so the first four uh, be attitudes demonstrate need. Write that down under the column. First four. The first four be attitudes demonstrate need. If it starts off by saying the poor in spirit. Why? Because the poor in spirit need God. Uh, notice what it is. Let's let's look at the first four here. Let's put it back on the screen. All right. The first four, it says, uh, blessed are the poor in spirit uh, for the kingdom for uh, the kingdom of God is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the humble for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. How many of you know that that shows a need? Because if you are poor in spirit, you need God. Amen. If you are poor in spirit, you need God. Uh, the mourner needs the Holy Spirit of God to comfort them. Uh, that is one reason that God breaks them to create the need or to make them aware of the need. Let me help you out because somebody's mourning today. Somebody's still in grief. Somebody's still in mourning. Uh, the reason why I hurt so bad, the reason why it, it, it is God, God allows it to break you so that you get to know what you really need. You don't need whatever it is that you lost. You can make it without it as long as you have God. And we don't always have to be grieving over somebody who has died. We can be grieving over a relationship that has died. We can be grieving over a situation or opportunity that has died, whatever it is. God wants you to know in this season 
that yes, your mourning is real and your grieving is real, is real human emotions. And we're not going to tell you not to feel your human emotions, but we are going to say to you that the good news, and here it is again, is that God says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. You ought to be happy. Why? Because now you realize that uh, I never would have made it without God on my side. Somebody ought to say amen to that if you know what I'm saying. Amen. Uh, I never would have made it without God on my side. And so under that first four, uh, you got to realize that the first four Beatitudes demonstrate a need. They demonstrate a need. Um, the meek need God. See, see it there? Let's put it back on the screen. See it there? Uh, uh, verse five. Uh, blessed are the humble or the meek, for they will inherit the earth. How many of you know that if you are meek, you need God? You need God because if you don't, if you don't have God, then you would just go off in a minute. Am I right about it? Amen. And so the meek need God. Uh, the hunger, they that hunger for righteousness uh, need spiritual food. Where does your spiritual food come from? It comes from God. And so the first four Beatitudes demonstrate a need. Now, if the first four demonstrate a need, then the second four demonstrate or focus on um, giving. And that's what I want you to see now. OK, so I'm going to put it up on the screen for those of you who are copying this down in your notes. So on the other side, I want you to write the second four Beatitudes, or you can just write focus on giving. So the first four demonstrate need. The second four focus on giving, focused on giving. Now, I want to put it back on the screen so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right. So here it is. Look at uh, number six. I'm sorry. Number seven. Blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy. That's giving. If you are merciful, then you are showing mercy. Look at verse eight. Blessed are the pure in heart. All right. For they will see God. Um, and so God gives himself because of our desperate need and the greater need, the more abundant his giving. And so after receiving Jesus Christ, we move into the area of self-giving. That's that second column that you're writing in right now. And so we often cycle. We often cycle uh, through the two sides, right? <clears throat> we go from one side to the other. Sometimes we need, and then sometimes we're giving so that God can continue to grow and develop our character for great service. None of us are always to give because if you're always just giving, then you're never receiving, right? You're never having your needs met. And all of us should not always just be uh, receiving and never giving because then your hands become too full and you become too full of whatever you have and you don't have room to receive anything else. So you got to make sure that when you're in need, uh, you look to God. And when you and when you aren't in need, that you're making sure you're the one that's giving. We're on both sides of this and both halves make the whole. OK. And so God gives of himself because of our desperate need. And so if God gives of himself, guess what we ought to do if we have the mind of Christ? We need to make sure that we give of ourselves because guess what? Greater the greater the need, the greater God's giving. All right. And so that's that's uh, let's go back to it. If you missed it, the first column, the first four Beatitudes demonstrate the need. The second four Beatitudes focus on giving. OK, now let's go back to the first side, the, the other side. So let's go back to the first. The first four Beatitudes are the keys to God's heart. They're the keys to God's heart. OK. And so the first four Beatitudes and we said what they were. Right. Uh, the poor in spirit mourning, which is brokenness, meekness and hungry for righteousness. These are the keys to God's heart. God loves the needy. That's his that's his heart. Right. Persons who meet these conditions are more receptive than persons who do not. And our need and our 
consequence or a consequent receiving in the first four Beatitudes prepare our character for something greater. So then if that's out on our first four column, uh, the keys to God's heart, then the second four, and we showed them to you, are the keys to God's character. Let's look at them again. Uh, the second four, starting at verse seven, blessed are the merciful. God is merciful. Therefore, you'll be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. All right. God is pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemaker. God is a peacemaker. Therefore, you'll be called the sons of God. Right. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness for the kingdom of heavens. Heaven is theirs. This tip, this shows us God's character, who God is, what makes God God. Amen. And so uh, mercy, uh, being pure, peacemakers, and even being persecuted are the keys to God's character. And because we need God, he gave us himself and we are becoming like Christ. Thus, we're doing the study on the mind of Christ. And so these second four qualities are Christ-like. If the, in them, uh, we practice being perfect. We get practice at being perfect and practice more so at perfect giving because he, we have uh, so much from God. And that's why, I mean, just go back and look at it again, giving. He, he says to us in these verse that you'll, rec you'll receive mercy, you'll be shown mercy because you're merciful, right? Look at verse eight. Um, you'll see God because you're giving from a pure heart, right? Uh, look at verse nine. Um, you'll be called the son of God because you're a peacemaker. L look at verse 10. Um, you'll receive the kingdom of heaven because you're persecuted for righteousness sake. All right. So as we're talking about the mind of Christ, we have those two halves of a whole that help us to develop the mind of Christ. Now, next week, as I'm drawing this uh, lesson to a close next week, we're going to talk more about the two halves of a whole. We're going to focus in on them. We're going to look at the focus of them, the greatness of them, the object of them. All right. And um, and then we'll continue to move on. This series has been great and it's starting to come to an end. But listen to me. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal savior, this is the greatest opportunity to get to know Jesus Christ. Now, nobody starts off just knowing, I mean, just, just, I, I'm going, I have faith to just move mountains. We all start off with that mustard seed faith, just enough faith to believe on Jesus Christ as our Lord and savior. That starts it and it starts growing and growing and growing. And somebody ought to testify in the comment section that I started off with this much faith. Now I got this much faith. All right. And it's still growing and it's still getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Why is it getting bigger? Because I get a chance and an opportunity to exercise my faith. Uh, what gives me the opportunity to exercise my faith? Believe it or not, adversity, the things that we go through gives me the opportunity to trust God. Here's what I want to show you as a picture of salvation. My my youngest daughter, uh, uh, June, is trying to learn to walk. Um, June, <laughs> praise the name of the Lord, is going to be walking soon because when I hold her hands, she walks like a power walker. Y'all hear me? She walks like a champ. Uh, but what I'm trying to get her to see now is that um, I, I want you to start walking on your own. And I'm still right there. I I'm not too far behind. I'm going to catch you if you fall. And I'm going to reach out and hold your hand when you become a little wobbly and unstable. But try to walk on your own. And there was one day that she took about four steps, y'all, and she realized that she was not holding my hand and turned around and looked and saw that I was not holding her hand. And she stooped on down and started crawling again. Listen to me. Uh, God is still there for us the whole time of this walk. If you are unsure of how to walk out this faith, all you ever have to do, if things get wobbly, if you're not sure if you can make it, just look to God. He will give you the stability that you need. He will give you the direction that you need. He'll give you the support that you need.
to continue to walk with him. And that's the first step that we have to do, accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So the first thing that you need to do is admit that you're a sinner because you are. And every one of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's what Romans 3.10 says, there's none righteous, no, not one. Then Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned. Everybody has messed up. I don't care who they are. I don't care how good they look. I don't care how well they can quote scriptures or sing songs or preach or pray or testify. Everybody has messed up. So uh, what do we deserve? We deserve hell because Romans 6.23 tells us that um, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Um, but if you back up just a little bit, Romans chapter five, verse eight tells us, but God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, didn't wait for you to get your life together, he helps you to get your life together. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. That's exactly, that's exactly the gospel message. Christ took the first step by dying on the cross for your sins. If you receive him now, if you accept them into your heart, then you can be saved from your sins. So what should we do? Romans 10 and 9. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, then we shall be saved. All right. We shall be saved. That's a promise from scripture. That's a promise from God himself. So pray this prayer with me. God, I'm a sinner. <sighs> I've messed up. I've done wrong things. I've done bad things. I've done good things thinking that I was doing good and really I was doing wrong. And even if I don't do all that wrong, just a little bit of wrong I do is enough to keep me out of heaven. I need a savior. And I thank you that you knew I needed that. You anticipated my needs. And over 2000 years ago, you already met my needs. You sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for my sins. And so that at this day, at this moment, at this hour, if I believe in him, I shall be saved. So I confess with my mouth that he is Lord. Believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. He is the son of God. And I give him full reign over my life. He's Lord. And I commit to living his word, his will, and his way. And I receive him into my heart. Thank you, God, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Father, I pray that the person who just prayed that prayer for the very first time, that your Holy Spirit would come in, as your word says in Ephesians, and seal them to the day of redemption. Father, I pray that you would give them a hunger and the thirst for righteousness to want to study, to show themselves approved unto you. Uh, workmen needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. I pray that they would want to attend Bible study and church service and walk right and live right for you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 And we praise God for each and every one of you who may have prayed that prayer. If you did it for the first time, please comment in the comment section. We want to know so that we can send you something to help you to grow. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. This brings us to the end of this Bible study. And we thank God for all of you being with us. Now, listen, I just want to explain that um, our Bible studies were pre-recorded uh, in for the majority of the summer. And that was because pastor has been working hard on a lot of different things, uh, both vocationally and religiously and uh, even uh, in, in personal life. And so um, all the things that I have been working on, I just needed to record the lesson and send them out. Amen. But I want you all to know that we are back to live lessons. And so we want to see your comments. We want to see your questions. Uh, we want to see your answers. Amen. In the comment section. And please make sure that you like and share. And uh, if we see some of them, then we will make sure that we display it up on the screen and we will address it. It is so good to see all of you. Uh, God bless you, my father's children. And uh, we'll see you again next Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. for our Bible study. Until next time, keep advancing the kingdom. May God bless you.